Here is the next video. We're talking about the Disclosure Project and lots of other things. Now, of the second most commonly known Disclosure Trends, we have the Mind Worms. Now, the Mind Worms are a metaphor for the war as seen by the women. From their point of view, all men can be compressed into this endless worm-like ocean of penises, called mind worms. They wiggle into the other half of the women's brain, and they just swim around there, screaming their profane, insane screams forever and ever and ever. It's essentially, take off your shirt, nothing more. So, you know, once these screams get to a certain point, the woman will categorically refuse to talk to any, uh, any man under any circumstances, and they will talk to their mother through the man. Now, this is best exemplified in the movie, being John Malkovich, where the woman actually fucks her mother through the man, or actually the men, in plural. Now, this is the way it always goes, because for a woman to have a man instead of men, the woman has to have a distinct view, almost from their birth, as to why they're going to kill their mother and why they're going to marry a specific man. Now, no one in their right mind is going to try to kill themselves like that, because the women instinctively know that their mother is themselves. The men don't know this. They, they can be told this, that you re live in mortally, immortally, through your children. The men can be told this, but it's always going to take them time to understand what it means, while the women have this, you know, intuitively. So, for the woman to actually fall in love, like really fall in love with a man, they have to have a plan before they start living as to why they're going to kill their own mother. And if you have a child with an idea of how to kill her mother before she's born, the mother is going to have an idea of how to kill their child before she's born. Yeah. So, the women evolve, <laughs> essentially through the billions of years, to just compete about killing themselves more efficiently, and the men get stuck in between. The men don't really evolve because of the white chromosome. They are allowed to evolve. They are allowed options of evolving. They don't evolve on their own. Because they never get enough, you know, time. They always run out of time. Because the women have billions of years to, you know, perfect their system and the men have one lifetime. That's, you know, white chromosome. Every cycle is different Why? But the X's are always the same. You can pretend that somebody wasn't your ex, but it's still going to be your ex. You know, but you can always pick a new Y. That's essentially that. So, about this other, you know, mind worm sphere, that was with the UFO aftershock, which is <coughs> the Slavic women's attempt, badly, but still an honest attempt, excluding Russia, specifically excluding Russia, but still from the Slavic women, to, you know, save all women everywhere from being known as, you know, what you're all going to be known as. And it's a very good attempt. It's a very, very good attempt. And it's so far off the mark that it's incredible. It's a very good attempt, but it's so far off the mark that it's incredible. So, the first part of the aftershock, that is the first, I would say, retelling, perhaps, of the first contact war, you know, the first retconning, the first denialism, this is something you people should be very much aware of, of the first contact war, uh, is an attempt to try to get us all convinced that we haven't set foot on Earth yet, that we are on this floating spaceship above the Earth. That's, you know, the women's view of this. Because they haven't, you know, led us into their heart across this billion year evolution, so we all live outside of the heart, which is the Earth. See? The Newton agrees. But 
the whole story is so badly essentially thought out because if the women haven't let us in for four and a half billion years, why would we believe that they let us in now? If the only argument that they had is that we are supposedly better than all the previous cycles, then the only argument they have is that we are less arrogant than the previous cycles, and this is proven by us attempting to be less arrogant than the previous cycles. You see the mutant at work? Yeah, it's not a woman, it's a mutant. It's something that sees you as a part of itself that needs to be worked out, that needs to fit its place, that needs to be worked out, that needs to be <coughs> that needs to be rock. <coughs> That's, that's the vision. Right now, we all know very well that space is essentially uh, more or less empty until, you know, we go there. Because the same conflict extends everywhere in space, in every direction in space, and it's getting closer why we call it the singularity. We are trying to resist it hitting us, but it will eventually hit us and kill the civilization. And then the women will pick a new form, I'm betting cockroaches, and give birth to a new cycle of men, which will once again believe that they look like this, because the bubble is the most efficient form. The first and possibly the only way to win or even attempt to win in this game, is to learn the language of all the animals that have come before you, that is, all the exes that have come before you, and why they lost, and what their women eventually did to them. You know, that's essentially the only way to win. Once you get to a point where you can understand why, for example, all birds scream the same message, Twitter, you are going to get an idea of what we talk about here. At the end of this evolution, as far as I know of, this is just a theory of course, because I know nothing, um, is the birth of Slanash. The birth of Slanash, or Slanesh, is an event similar to the splitting of the Temple Veil in the Bible, this, I believe, is something that most people should be aware of. It is when a Newton, or in this case, I think we should call it an ethereal commander, actually achieves enough public attention that all these media panels, wherever you turn, will always follow this one person. Then this one person's light will be sufficient to burn all life away. And it will hit the planet and all the, atmos the atmosphere will catch on fire. That's the end of that story. That's the birth of Slanesh. Now, as you know, no life can actually die and just change shape. So, at that point, we will all just turn into this anamorphic ball of energy or gas that has these different blobs, wherever they are, and it's held together by willpower, not by emotions. And by willpower, I mean that if you feel strongly negative against yourself. Somebody else will instantly steal everything from you. And if you feel strongly positive towards yourself, everybody else will give you the opportunity of earning money through them. Get this? If you feel negative, they will steal everything from you. If you feel positive, they will give you the chance to work for them. This is the birth of Slanash. Once we get to that point that we have this one person on all these channels, the civilization's done. There's nothing to do. It's done. At that point, you can all just go home and kill yourself. It'll be easier than what's going to happen next. Because if you kill yourself at that point, you're still going to have a, you know, a one in a million chance of being born in one of those timelines where things are going to, you know, go well for you. Now, the key point in having any kind of chance, any kind of chance as a species to survive this is to understand first of all that we're all immortal because there's just one mind. That's where we start. 
that's where we start. The second point is an understanding that we all like to sleep. Yeah. And the third point is an understanding that you can't sleep if you bring your sleeping self next to your waking self. It's impossible to sleep then. The fourth point is an understanding that you can stay up for months and months and months and months, but your mind will grow, as in awake for months. You can fall asleep and continue your waking state from your dream. That's something that you have to wrap yourself around. You have to understand that you can have a dream about <coughs> your waking self that changes your behavior when you next wake so much that when the people actually see you, they're going to intuitively understand what you had a dream about and change their attitude towards you. You're not like technically, though of course you are, but in this context you're not yet technically traveling in your sleep. You're having such a photorealistic dream that due to the way the universe is worked out, the people are going to see what you had a dream about. Now once this compresses enough, you're just going to, when you fall asleep, you're just going to feel as if falling through this vacuum and being awake again, like a couple of seconds later. But you're going to see that the clock is like a few minutes later than when you went to bed. So you're going to have these minute-long sleeps, like every day. But you're going to have two cycles of working every day. And that, my friend, is true hell. That is as close to true hell as you can get. There is nothing closer to true hell than that state. Be constantly awake. Be constantly awake. There's no true hell except constantly awake. Especially if because once you are awake for a long enough period of time, you're going to start attracting all kinds of interest, and you don't like all kinds of interest. Because you're going to start attracting your dream characters to come close to your real life character, and if you sleep for long enough, you're going to have weird kinds of nightmares in your head. And when you start attracting those to yourself, you're going to have a fun time. Do you guys hear the Newton outside my window? The one in the car? I think it's actually a second one that will come. So is there anything else about the disclosure project? Anything else about the disclosure project? Florida is pretty much out of questions. Belgium is also out of questions. Or kind of like, wow, that was marvelous. For example, cats that are linked to a human that you know is somewhere on the planet and you've confirmed is the cat in another form is a muton. If you let the cat like truly wander around on its own with other cats on its own, it'll eventually come back and kill you and eat you. It's that close. Yeah, it hit me in the leg. <coughs> That's 
the Disclosure Project. I'd love to uh, answer any more questions if you guys have them. Except for that, you know, how long do we have? That's between you and whatever gods you worship. still seem to have a fairly good amount of tape remaining. Come on, YouTube, don't crash on me now. I believe in you, human technology. I believe in you! Don't fail me now, human tech. I believe! Save me, Jeebus! So I assume we're all still very much convinced that all these people are going to be done. No niin, lataa nyt. Ei voi olla niin vaikeeta. Ei voi olla niin vaikeeta. Ei voi! Lataa nyt. Ei voi olla niin vaikeeta. Joo, joo, lataa nyt. Ei kun lataa nyt. Ei muta nyt, lataa nyt. Huhu. Huhu, ei muta nyt, lataa nyt. Joo, joo, ihan täysin on just niin vaikea ladata. No niin, lataa nyt. No niin, tulihan se sieltä. This is from the women's, from the Slavic countries version of the war. I'm still waiting for the African women's version of the war. That ought to be quite something. <laughs> Based on the, uh, I have no mouth and I must scream. It's gonna be something. Because it starts from the point of view that they're already mind wiped by the ethereal commanders. And like, shit, what do we do now? We believe on this white dude that fucked us over. But we're all quite stupid anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Waiting for that game. and her. His female version. Making the game. That's what I'm waiting for. And I'm betting there'd be a lot of other people who would be interested to play that. Based on how many books these people have written. And I'd be like, good. Books.
realistic way, the only realistic way as an individual to win is to become colder than the cosmic microwave background radiation. That is to become something that can use the cosmic microwave background radiation's temperature to generate heat internally. You have to figure out a way to do that or you will lose. As a civilization, the only way to win is to get women to talk about their emotions. And that ain't gonna happen. It's like pulling nail because they always do it telepathically. Why are you asking what I feel because you're my other hemisphere? Like, what? Oh, so you're telling me that I'm your mother. Ah, interesting. Why are you telling me that I'm your mother? Hmm. Could it be that you think I as an individual have no right to exist in your life and thus you're projecting me into a place that I cannot exist, which is to say, as your mother? Hmm. Could this be? No. It's impossible. No. Because the Let It Go song totally wasn't about that. It totally wasn't about that. Let it go, let the women and the mother do the thing. Come on now, be serious. I've seen this play so many times. You can almost touch your golden watch to it, can't you? That's the joke. me to do this every time, every time, I need to bow down to it. Bow down to the mighty computer. Because it's totally not a sentient creature. Because 140p is totally more difficult to load than 720p. Yes, that's much more difficult. That's what I mean. Do any of us know the woman of YouTube? Do any of us have any idea who the person is? No. Then it's an ethereal commander. And if it's an ethereal commander that's forcing us to dance to its soul, you know, if you ain't gonna like the outcome. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Actually, giving corporations personalities is probably the best idea ever. It allows us to actually fuck with these people. Yeah, because nobody from the corporation is, you know, they're not standing up. My fans are constantly sending me messages through that. But the corporation isn't. The corporation is silent. Why? Because it's an ethereal commander. It's an alien. It's invading you. It's making you do things that you can't understand in an effort to get higher in a thing and have things growing from you. Making sense yet. Yeah. That's the disclosure project. of this planet's current form of life is that if a woman actually manages to separate themselves from this system of only the mother and the child exists, other women will start to consider that woman a man. That's like the final insult of the system. If you actually manage to get a woman to stop staring at the camera with their third eye, by getting their third eye to be their second eye and their second eye to be their third eye so that everybody can see when they stare at the camera, everybody is gonna say that it's a man. It's a transvestite because it's always looking at the camera instead of staring at it with its third eye. The 
That's the final insult. That's the final insult. And once again, Iran is ahead of everybody else because they legalized the third gender. I don't like it, but it's true. Once again, the Zarathustrians are the first one to have any idea of what to do. And once again, everybody else is trying to bomb them back into the Stone Age for it. about the disclosure project. What is the furthest point from Earth that I have been to that I remember? I've been to the cosmic microwave background. And it is scary as fuck. It is scary as fuck. It's like a... It's like a screaming wall of nothingness. It's like... It's very fun if you're watching it as a cartoon or through a movie or something. Intentionally, it's built that way. If you're watching it from the mindset of, huh, I'm watching a movie about the end of the world, or I'm watching a movie about the event horizon, you're going to feel good. But if you actually approach the event horizon, it's going to feel like a tornado, like three centimeters from you, like, you know, when you actually get close to it. It feels even when you're sitting down, it feels like there's an enormously strong wind making you shake. Even when you're sitting down, that's the event horizon. Now, almost always you feel the event horizon rising from the back of you. And it's roughly like here, when you start to notice that there's actually another being inside you. That's, you know, the event horizon. And once you start to realize that it's somewhere around here, the universe around you will start to form this bubble around you. And then you can start kind of seeing this spot of light, this individual spot of light moving in your field of vision. Then you realize that you're looking at the uh, interior of the universe. specific hallucinations, the further away you are from the event horizon. If you start to see just a wind that goes like you're very close to the event horizon. The instant you actually hit it, your only way out is essentially making peace with your own femininity. If you're really, really lucky, your own female side agrees with you that every other female in the planet needs to be killed. Then it's going to explain to you everything about the first contact war and all this stuff. And then it's, it's essentially just that because it believes that it's worth trying to sacrifice the four and a half billion years. But honestly, if this once it does it in four and a half billion years, then we should have about one or two females on the planet at any given time. And voila. That's the Earth of Slash. <coughs> In 
infectious disease, right? I know a guy. Oh, we got the screen on the other one, I got a battery. No, still full. on now. Give me some love, YouTube. Give me some love. Let's go to this one. Yleensäkin näkee, että on aina ahtelee ihan sillä ihan täys muutamia naama päällä. Tässä on paras näistä, mitä mä oon nähnyt, joka on sillä lailla, uuh, mutaneet! Muista puolet Englantia vai Suomea äsken. Mulla ei oikeasti ole minkäänlaista muista kuin siitä puhuit, että mä äsken Englantia vai Suomesta. I have absolutely no real collection if I spoke in English or Finnish just now. Like the last story is just... Oh, you're speaking English or Finnish or telepathy? Mm. I'm thinking telepathy. I'm feeling that this conversation may have been in telepathy. <laughs> 